it says a conscience I mentioned to you is like a baby it has to go to sleep before you can Benjamin Franklin said a good conscience is a continual Christmas a best place to rest your head is on a clear conscience he's somebody else said a guilty conscience needs no accuser and somebody else said a man's conscience like a warning light on a highway tells him what he shouldn't do but it does not keep him from doing it he who loses his conscience has nothing left that is worth keeping there is no pillar so no pillow no so soft as a clear conscience can somebody say amen i want to give you three consequences of rejected conscience the first consequence of rejected conscience is that it grieves the holy spirit most of us do not realize but when you become a christian your conscience becomes alive through the holy spirit holy spirit resurrects it and it becomes a vehicle through which holy spirit speaks to you holy spirit speaks to your spirit your spirit is made out of three components it's made out of conscience it's made out of intuition and it's made out of subconscious these three become the vehicles through which holy spirit sends his information to you 95 percent of all people who ever hear god do not hear god in their ears they hear god through their conscience most of people who say i want to hear god it was wonderful we started to read the book good morning holy spirit and many people in our home group started to ask this question how can i hear the holy spirit and many times we think it's something mystical we think it's something like floating in the sky or we think it's like samuel we think it's gonna have this movie kind of a sound effect to it chills in your spine with a little music playing in the background but if you ever walked with the lord you recognize and realized that when your conscience bothers you it's the still small voice and this voice is the vehicle the holy spirit uses so actually we can come to the conclusion the way you treat your conscience is the way you treat the holy spirit we can say we welcome you holy spirit we love you holy spirit take more of me holy spirit and give me more of you but the real value you place on the holy spirit is not what you say in church about holy spirit it's how you respond to him in the church and outside of the church when he troubles your conscience so rejected conscience grieves the holy spirit when we accept and we pay attention to our conscience we can develop a relationship with a holy spirit the second thing that rejected conscience does is it gets seared it gets dull the more conscience is rejected the more conscience becomes not sensitive an Indian man they asked an Indian man one day what is a conscience and he said a conscience is this peg that has these four sharp edges and when you do something bad it pushes you to the wall and cuts you with it but when you keep doing something bad it gets so smooth on the edges that it becomes a circle and it doesn't cut you no more it actually gives you fun and that's exactly what conscience is when it's ignored it loses its sharpness and after a while you're doing what's wrong feeling like it's right and that's where people can do kill somebody and don't think nothing wrong about it because their conscience is seared conscience is so precious that if it's ignored once ignore twice ignore third time and then you you just don't even know it does not speak it's a broken compass and you are running your life doing what you want to do thinking everything is fine when in actuality you're way off the third thing that the conscious does is it shipwrecks your faith when it's rejected we already mentioned that I find example in the Bible of King David when the Bible says that he was being chased by his father-in-law Saul and who was his king who was his boss and a few times the Lord put Saul into David's hands within the reach to kill him actually he was able to and one particular time you know David steals the jar and the spear and 
he returns them back but there was another time when the bible says that david was hiding in the cave and saul went in to use a restroom in the cave and somehow as he was urinating the bible says that david ran to the back and he cut a little bit of the rope of saul and there is this part that it says there that david felt guilty for cutting the rope of a king he was only doing it to prove to him i'm not interested in your death like people tell you but he felt even guilty for cutting a piece of a robe of a king now when you look at life of david you see that his faith was so bold and strong it was ensured every time david guarded his conscience he lived with his conscience so strong he protected so carefully and he probably did not know that in protecting his conscience it's his conscience that holds his faith and that's why David was able to even the older days of his life be a man of great faith great valor and great boldness why because a man who protects his conscience is the man who protects his faith